In this video, we will look at applying differentiation to obtaining equations of tangents and normals and common questions related to tangents and normals. For any given curve, let's say I have this curve, we can always specify two lines. The first line is a line that just touches a point on the curve and we call this the tangent. And we can also have a line that is perpendicular to the same point and this is called the normal. Now we are interested to find out the equations of a tangent and a normal to a certain point on the curve. And we can make use of the following equation. y minus y0 equals to m x minus x0, where x0, y0 is the coordinates of the point of interest. That means this point over here, x0, y0. And m is the gradient of the line. The gradient of a tangent is simply dy dx and the gradient of a normal is negative 1 divided by dy dx. Since we know that the product of two lines that are perpendicular is always equals to minus 1. In example 1, we are asked to find out the equation of the tangent to the curve y equals to sine inverse x at a point when x is equals to half. So first, we need to find out a point that the line passes through. That point will be x0, y0, and x0 will be a half. Correspondingly, y0 will be equal to sine inverse half, which becomes pi over 6. Next, I need to find out the gradient of the tangent. So I will have to find dy dx. It will be equal to 1 over square root 1 minus x square. And when x equals to half, dy over dx will be equals to 1 over square root 1 minus half square, which is the same as square root 1 minus 1 quarter. So I get square root of 3 quarter at the bottom, which is the same as 2 over square root 3. Therefore, I know that the equation of the tangent is y minus y0, and y0 is pi over 6 equals to m. 2 over square root 3, x minus x0, which is half. Therefore, if I rearrange in the, to write in the form of y equals to mx plus c, I will get y equals to 2 over square root 3x minus 1 over square root 3 plus pi over 6. And this will be the equation of the tangent to the graph of y equals to sine inverse x when x equals to half. Other than finding the equation of the tangents and normals at particular points, we can also obtain general equations of tangents and normals by using a general coordinate. For example 2, we shall determine the general equation of a tangent to a curve. And this curve has been defined parametrically as x equals to sine t, y equals to cos t plus t. And the point of interest is sine t cos t plus t. That means we do not sub any particular value of t into the equation, but instead we just let it be t and t can be any real value. So we need to find out what is the gradient of our tangent, which means dy dx. So dy over dx, we know it is dy over dt divided by dx over dt. And dy over dt is negative sine t plus 1 divided by cosine T. Now we have everything that we need to form the equation of the tangent since we do not need to substitute any particular value of t. So therefore, equation of tangent is y minus cos t plus t equals to m which is 1 minus sine t divided by cos t x minus sine t and if we were to rearrange it becomes y equals to 1 minus sine t over cos t times x minus 1 minus sine t over cos t times sine t plus cos t plus t and this is the equation of the tangent at the point sine t cosine
cosine t plus t. For any curve, whenever we find out the tangents and normals, we know that the tangents and normals will always intersect the x and y axis at certain points, like here, here, and here, and here. And the points together with the original point will form certain triangles and sometimes we are asked to find out the area of these triangles. If the triangles have their bases on the same axis like this or this, we can find out the area of these triangles very easily by using half base times height. However, sometimes we may be asked to find out triangles where they have points like this. And it is more difficult for us to define what is the base and what is the height. And in such cases, we will make use of the shoelace method to define the area of the triangle. To use the shoelace method, we can write half times of a big pair of modulus, then pick a random vertex on a triangle, which I call it point A, with coordinates of x0, y0. I will write down these coordinates as the first column of my modulus. Next, I will move anti-clockwise to the next point which is B with coordinates of x1, y1 and I will write down their coordinates as the second column and subsequently move to point C with x2, y2 and I write the coordinates down in the third column. Finally, I will repeat the coordinates of point A again as the final column in the modulus. To evaluate this modulus, what we have to do is to first multiply all the terms that are connected by a downward arrow like this. And uh, we will subtract them by all the terms connected by the upward arrow. So we have x0 y1 plus x1 y2 plus x2 y0 subtracted by the sum of y0 x1, y1 x2, and y2 x0. Evaluating this entire term over here will give us the area of the triangle. In example 3, we know that for a certain point P on a curve, it has coordinates of 2, 1, so it's somewhere over here. It has tangents of y equals to 2x minus 3, so something like this. And it has a normal of y equals to minus half x plus 2, something like this. And I know that the tangent cuts the x-axis at a point t, so this is my point t. If I substitute y equals to 0 into the equation of my tangent, I will find out that the coordinates is actually 3 over 2, 0. And for the y, for the normal, it is going to cut the y-axis at point n, and its coordinate is going to be 0, 2. And now I am asked to find out the area of this triangle P, T, N. And I'm going to use the shoelace method to find out this area. So the area is going to be half. Now I can pick any point to be the first vertex in which I start this modulus, but as a general rule, usually I will try to pick the point with the most number of zeros so as to simplify my calculation later on. So I will use point n, 0, 2, followed by point t, 3 over 2, 0, followed by point p, 2, 1, and finally close off with 0, 2 again. Now I just have to expand this, I get half, open the square bracket, and now a round bracket where I'm going to do all the downward arrows like this, which are 0 plus 3 over 2 plus 4, subtracted by all the upward arrows, which gives me 3 plus 0 plus 0. And if I evaluate this term over here, it becomes 5 over 4 unit square. And this is the area of the triangle PTN. Sometimes a tangent or a normal intersects the curve at multiple points. For example, I may have something like this. My curve looks 
like this and my tangent goes this way we see that other than this original point where i found my tangent this tangent is going to intersect my curve at another point and we need to know how to find the coordinates of these other points and these other points can be solved very easily by solving simultaneous equations between the equation of the curve with the equation of the either the tangent or the normal in example 4 we are given the parametric equation x equals to t squared plus 2t and y equals to 3t cubed minus 2t and we have to determine the equation of the tangent and the second point at which this tangent cuts the graph again so first let's try to find out the equation of the tangent by finding out what is dy dx the dy dx will be dy over dt which is 9t squared minus 2 divided by dx dt which is 2t plus 2 since we are given a point t equals to 1 we have to find out all the particular values pertaining to t equals to 1 so when t equals to 1 i know that x is going to be 3 y is going to be equal to 1 and dy over dx is going to be 7 over 4 and therefore i can say that the equation of tangent is y minus 1 equals to 7 over 4 x minus 3 and if i simplify i will get y equals to 7 over 4 x minus 17 over 4 and this is the equation of the tangent next to find out the other intersection point i simply have to equate the two equations together so what i'm going to do is to substitute this x and this y into the equation of my tangent so i am going to solve for equation in terms of t first before substituting this value of t back into x and y so therefore i will end up with 3t cubed minus 2t equals to 7 over 4 t squared plus 2t minus 17 over 4 if i expand and rearrange this equation i will eventually end up with 12t cubed minus 7t squared minus 22t plus 17 equals to 0 and for this equation i can solve using gc i will get t equals to 1 or negative 17 over 12 of course t equals to 1 has occurred before since it's given in the question I'm going to reject it and based on this second value of t of negative 17 over 12 I will be able to find out the corresponding x value and y value so x will be equals to negative 17 over 12 square plus 2 times negative 17 over 12 which gives me negative 119 over 144 and y equals to 3 times of negative 17 over 12 cubed minus 2 times of negative 17 over 12 which gives me negative 3281 over 576 and therefore the other point will be negative 119 over 144 negative 3281 over 576 and that's it